Hello and welcome to the necessary nine Google My Business optimizations that you need to put in place to succeed in 2022. The online space is completely different than it was three years ago. Businesses that never anticipated being online already, sometimes not even in the radar of business plan are now online. Small mom and pop shops have the ability to shop online, curbside pickup, most restaurants have some kind of online ordering capacity. This became essential to surviving some of the pandemic restrictions. So now the question isn't, hey, do I need to put my business online? The question really is, what do I need to do to succeed online? And that has really changed in the last two years. So the recommendations that are for succeeding in 2022 are very different than they were back before the pandemic. So welcome. My name is Tiffany Ann Botcher and I am the CEO of Botcher Business Management Agency. We are a full service, start to finish business management agency that focuses on operations, systems, processes, bookkeeping, and digital marketing. What makes us unique is that we work with clients in a capacity that allows the client to work with one project manager that they build that relationship with. And that project manager helps connect with each of the people on our team that are specialists within their industry. So rather than the client having to work with an SEO specialist, a digital marketing specialist, social media, all of these different people, because that becomes almost a full-time job, just managing the, the team of people you have working in your business. Instead, you build the connection and the relationship with one person who gets to know your expectations, the way you like things done, you know, your deadlines and whatnot, and then they help coordinate with all of the rest of the people. So this allows for your business to have access to the amount of time they need from each of these specialists and, and in a way that doesn't take up any more time for you or more budget. Because instead of having to hire all of these people independently who may have time minimums and, and whatnot. Now you just have access to what you need. I'm also the founder of Eleanor and Eleanor is the software platform that we recommend for service-based businesses. This does all sorts of um, automation and lead management and tracking of different analytics and conversations and all of these different pieces that are so essential to your business. We bring them all into one business ecosystem and are seeing great success. If you have any questions about either of these, I am happy to chat about them at the end. So what is new in 2022? Google My Business, the name Google My Business is actually on its way out. So it is now gonna be called the Google Business Profile. So originally this was known as Google Plus, Google Local. So it's it's changed names a few times and and I don't think that the Google My Business is going anywhere soon. You just might see any one of these names used interchangeably online when you're looking at resources. We're gonna chat a little bit about the significance of Google. Google basically at this point runs the internet. And I say that in jest, but it also has a little bit, it has an element of seriousness. Much like when you're sick, you don't get a tissue, you get Kleenex. I mean, depending on where you're tuning in from, that might be, may, might be different. But at the end of the day, Kleenex has become the tissue in some areas. It goes back many, many years. Google has become the place you look for information. Nowhere. In 2022, does anyone say, oh, you need to go Yahoo that? Yahoo's, Yahoo's there. Yahoo's in existence. You can still use it. But you don't go Yahoo something. You Google something. And the fact is, the Google space is crowded. It's competitive. And there's only so much space to go around. 
you know, it's a joke among marketers that the best place to hide a dead body is at the bottom of the first page of Google because nobody looks there. So often people pop something in the search bar, scroll a little bit, see that first business, the Google My Business profile. Oh, in my area, looks good, got some reviews, perfect. And then they, they move forward. Often that profile honestly becomes the gatekeeper of your website. Now, whether it is social media content, a brilliant blog post, a, a fancy website, thousands of dollars invested, if no one is seeing this content, if nobody is seeing this website, these are not good investments. The amount of, of time that people invest, super common, one of the questions when I'm consulting with clients on the phone is, you know, how are your clients finding you? So, you know, questions like, you know, one of the, the big pieces is, is your client aware that they need you? So if you are a tire shop, typically people are going to seek you out. They are going to go when their tires are worn out, when it's time to change for the season, people are going to go looking for the tire shop. But if you have something that's new, less common, you know, you solve a problem that realistically almost needs to be diagnosed, you know, I see this in, you know, quite common for different types of counseling or, um, you know, realistically, you know that you can help the person and they know they have a problem, but they don't necessarily know that you can solve their problem. It's, it's two very different things because one, the person is seeking you out and the other one is you need to provide enough information for that client to know that you can help them, that, that you and the client are should be connected and so it's it's two very different pieces and you know when we look at especially option number two when you need to be providing enough information for the client a lot of times people are using blog posts and things social media driving brand awareness all of these are great great tools but if you are spending countless hours writing blog content and you look at your blog content views and they are big dot zero, this is not a good use of your time. We need to figure out how to get the clients to the blog so that the clients can then consume the information, in turn realize that they need you, and then that, that customer journey can start. So let's talk a little bit about the facts and the stats about these profiles. 84% of business profile views come from a discovery search. So this means someone does not type in your business name. They don't go to uh, samthemechanic.com. They don't type Sam the Mechanic into the Google search bar. They type mechanic near me. They type mechanic in their city. They, you know, where can I take my car to be repaired? car oil change near me, um, all of these types of things. They are looking for a provider that can solve their problem. And so that is what is called the discovery search. They looked up either a specific product, service, you know, if, if you have a using, kind of sticking with the mechanic, you know, example, Maybe you have a vintage Volkswagen that requires a specific mechanic. Okay, well, you're going to go to Google and you might say, you know, vintage Volkswagen mechanic. We want to make sure that Google, it is essential that Google has the information about our business to know, oh, hey, this client is looking for this business and match them up. So, so super important. And that is why 
Google having more information, completing these optimizations becomes so important. When we think of the Google My Business profile as a gatekeeper to the website, so you have a client, a prospective client who is searching and they are searching for a business just like yours. You are perfect for them. And they go to Google and most, most times people don't use the URL bar at the top. They are not typing in www.samthemechanic.com. They are going to go to the search bar and they're gonna enter the information. Now a couple of things happen. Number one, if you are in an industry where there are other people running paid traffic, that is gonna be at the top of the Google page. If you're in a competitive industry, one of your competitors might have actually entered the fact that, hey, I am a direct competitor of Sam the Mechanic, and when someone types in Sam the Mechanic, I want my ad to be first. I want that business. This is totally allowed. So, but what can happen is your Google My Business profile sits on the right side of the menu. It is this prime real estate, and this is very keyword based. So if someone has searched for Sam the Mechanic, regardless of your where your website is ranking, regardless of where the ads are, that Google My Business profile has its time to shine because it has that spot. And so most people will scroll, see that Google My Business profile, and often, especially if people are not um, web focused, tech savvy, if they, if they just wanna call, a lot of times people will scroll, see the, the profile and click the call button. That's it. They've never actually made it to your website. And that's why I kind of refer to it as a gatekeeper. So optimization number one is we wanna make sure we're using all the contact features. So when we think about all the different people who could be seeking out your business, you wanna think about, hey, some people do wanna call. They don't wanna fill out a contact form. They don't wanna wait for you to get back to them. Some industries, the response time over email is way slower than just picking up the phone. Or if you're in an industry where it's super time sensitive, I mean, if you think about somebody standing there with a burst pipe, water pouring into their home, they're not going to say, oh, I'm just gonna go fill out the contact form and hope someone gets back to me. They wanna call, they wanna speak to a person. And so having the call button, which is the old fashioned, the traditional, super important. But the trend is going to messaging. Many people, if given the option for something that is not emergency based, will choose messaging over calls. So we also wanna have that messaging feature enabled. Depending on the industry, and we'll, we'll choose, and we'll talk about kind of categories in different industries um, a little bit later on, but when we, when we look at the features, if there is a feature in terms of contact and communication that Google is offering you, you should be using it with one disclaimer. As long as you're going to use it effectively, there is nothing worse than sending a message to a business and never getting a response. So you want to make sure that you have a system or process in place to get back to those people. So if it's a message that's coming in and you know, a lot of times service-based businesses, the entrepreneur, owner, message answerer is perhaps on a job. Maybe they can't answer that phone call immediately. Maybe they can't answer that text message style correspondence. We need to make sure that we have systems, processes, automations in place to respond to those, to get back to people, to make sure that they know, yeah, we've got your message and we are on it. Even if that's just to say, hey, got your message, we'll get back to you you know, in the next hour, two hours, whatever is relevant to your industry, but just that, just that response. So you wanna, you know, optimization number one is to make sure that you are using all of the contact features because your customers, some will prefer one thing over another. So turn them all on and then make sure that each of them has a system and process in place 
so that you can be using them in a way that offers a good experience to your customer. Some, some industries have a book appointment link uh, right in the Google My Business profile. And so if you are someone who is, has that booking, online booking capability, you wanna add that link right in. When we, talk, when we go back to that kind of term of the gatekeeper, sometimes if people know they want to do business with you, they don't ever actually get to your website. So the, the investment in that Google My Business profile is so worthwhile because sometimes that's all. That's, that is what people get to see and they never get to the website. And so, you know, the investment into the beautiful layout, the perfect aesthetic, you know, the great blog, all these pieces, sometimes it never, it, it never even reaches your client's eyes. And so while it's all important, the Google My Business profile, the, the importance of optimizing it is, is, has only leveled up. Optimization number two, super important, not just for Google My Business. When we look online, it's important that details that are supposed to match, match. So if you are going to, you know, if you have a business name that is um, Smith and Sons Company, and sometimes you write company as CO, and other times you write company as C-O-M-P-A-N-Y, like short versus long. Um, another example is street in your address being a full name or ST, then other times being ST period. Um, all of these are examples. When Google is trying to say, this is the same as this, it's important that the details match. So when you're choosing a way to enter your company details, it needs to be the same everywhere. This is important. Decide one way and everywhere you add it online, that is how all of these pieces are, are for sure in Google's algorithm, this, matches with this. Okay. This matches with this. ST dot and street S-T-R-E-E-T. -E -E those don't match. It's not the same. Okay. So it comes back to that kind of, um, you know, the two pictures side by side. Can you spot the differences? And they're very slight. And, you know, to a quick glance, you don't even see them. Now's the time to really kind of dig in and say, hey, what is this exactly the same? Another piece for Google My Business Profiles that causes some issues is duplicate addresses. So if you share a space with someone, maybe it's a chiropractor's office but each of the chiropractors is an independent business and it's a shared office space. Um, could also be, I've seen dentist office like this, or, um, you know, if you, if you operate out of like a shared co-working space, if you have the same address as another business, Google says, well, that doesn't make sense. What's going on? And oftentimes you'll end up with things like verification issues and extra questions and like it, it causes, it causes an issue, an ongoing issue. So if you have this, you need to use unit numbers. You need to make sure that it is clearly one business at one address and one business at the other address. We want to make sure that any of these address details, phone numbers, emails, your business details need to be simple and consistent. Okay, optimization number three, category and attributes. So this ties in to what we were talking about earlier about depending on your industry, the features that you're going to be offered. 
what's relevant to a restaurant is going to be very different than what would be relevant to a dentist in terms of what features are needed. It's also very different in terms of what a customer is looking for. Categories and attributes are updated regularly. There is over 3,000 categories and, and there, it's, a, it's a fluid list that often, um, if you've ever gotten an email from, from Google directly that says, hey, we think your profile might be this. Do you approve this change? It's because somewhere in the back algorithm, you know, an update has been made, a change has been made, and now they're saying, hey, do you belong Do you belong over here? Is this your category? And so you want to make sure that you are specific without being exclusive. And so I'm going to explain what that, what that means. So if you have a, a racing bike store, are you a store? Yes. Are you a bike store? Yes. Are you really focused on racing bikes? If you only offer racing bikes, then your category is a racing bike store because you want it to be easy for those people to find you. And if, if they are looking for a racing bike store and you are, your category is store. I mean, how many stores are there? The chance of them actually finding you becomes much less. But if you offer all sorts of bikes, if you are a bike store and you want to specialize in racing bikes, but you also offer kids bikes and leisure bikes and all these things, and you choose racing bike store, well, now when someone Googles that they want to go to the bike store, you're not going to come out. And so that's, you want to be as specific as you can, but you definitely don't want to exclude who would be your clients. So it's a fine balance. Attributes are a little different. Um, these look at things like is, you know, does your business identify as woman owned? Do you have a, you know, wheelchair access? Um, different, you know, the restaurants in terms of attributes often have, have more. Um, the list has been updated. It, it, continues to be updated. And while someone's probably not going to um, go seeking out just based on attributes, to some people, as they are trying to choose one vendor over another, some of these attributes might contribute to their decision. So it's important to make sure that they're in place. Category is one of the most important parts to make sure that Google knows, hey, this is what is important for this business. So taking the time and not just choosing kind of, oh, I think we're kind of this. We want to make sure that it is, the time is spent to make sure that you're in the right category. Optimization number four, images. So there's two pieces to this. Number one is not just for Google. This is across the web. Often if you're downloading things, images and, and uploading and whatnot, you end up with, with image names, file names, such as image.jpg, image.png. Uh, no, now you've got image two. You've got, you know, small size image two, edited image three. While this doesn't hurt you, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a missed opportunity. You want to use those keywords. These are still keywords. These are still things, places that can be associated with your business. So renaming your images to be reflective, to be associated with your business, important. And when you're doing things like this, as, as a side tip, whether that is the way you name your websites, um, you know, your longer URLs, um, maybe for a blog post or something like that, you want to use hyphens. You don't want to just add a bunch of words together, um, you know, the best 
Japanese restaurant dot jpeg. All one word. That would not be helpful. You need to hyphen. The hyphen best hyphen Japanese hyphen restaurant. So adding keywords in there for location, adding keywords in there for industry, things about your business. This is this is a little bit of a, a bonus spot that you can add in those details. This is for your website as well. If you have a website full of images that say image3.jpg, we definitely want to rename those and, and use utilize that space. The other piece, geotagging photos. This one is, is kind of that next level piece. So when we're looking at optimizations, if this necessary nine is like, whoa, I don't know about this, this seems like a lot, I would, I would take the geotagging off the list. But if you are looking to level up, go all in, you have the available resources to, to say like, hey, I wanna do all of these things, then the geotagging should stay in. The number of searches containing near me has gone up by over 200%. So while people used to say industry city, a lot of times people now are just, hey, you know, barbershop near me mechanic shop near me. Google needs to know what, who, who belongs in the near me bubble? What, what business is that? You want to make sure, again, sure your address is in your Google My Business profile. But by adding that information into to your photos, to all of these pieces, this continues to just offer Google more information. So again, if you're, if you're looking to optimize but not overwhelm, leave the geotagging off. But if you want to go all in on 2022 and are looking for every possible optimization, this is a little bit of the secret sauce that might be worth investigating for you. So there are different apps, um, free, some are free, some are paid, where you can add in the geotagging information. So if you take a picture with a, a mobile phone, like your iPhone, that, that geotagging information is automatically saved to your picture. However, if you take that photo and add it into Canva and add a nice social media graphic or, or edit it in some way, it doesn't have any of this geotagging information. So you would need to add that back in. Um, so if you were taking photos with a like, professional um, photography camera, again, not going to be geotagging things. So this is kind of one of these next level pieces that if you want to you know, level up, the opportunity is there. For those who don't know, we have a Facebook community for business owners and entrepreneurs. So head on over to Facebook and search for the Service Based Business Society. There is also a link down in the description. Number five, from the business. You have 750 characters of juicy information about your business. However, unless someone wants to expand the box, only the first 250 characters are seen. So essential to get that information that draws people in the hook in the first 250 characters. This section is also super important for keywords. Keeping in mind that you don't want to use that up for keywords that are other places in your Google My Business profile. Really think about that profile as an expensive piece of land. And you don't want to, you know, if you were trying to get a billboard for your business, or if you were trying to buy a piece of land with great road frontage, you would want to make sure that whatever signage, whatever was on the billboard was super relevant to your business. And you would definitely not want to be using any of that for a duplicate message. This is the same for the keywords on the front page. If you are entering it somewhere else in um, the products and services section, you definitely don't want to be adding that into the first 250 characters. 
So really put value to all 750 characters, especially from a search perspective. But in terms of like that attention grabbing, um, first 250 characters, very important. The other piece to anything keyword related is that you want to use the same terminology that your customer is looking for, not the terminology that is industry specific. I mean, if you have a, a group of employees, what you may call something is not necessarily the same as, as what the customer is going to call it when they're having this problem. So be sure that the words that you're using anywhere online that you're using for keyword driven searching are the same that the client would use. Number six, the beautiful Google gold stars. You know, it's interesting. Um, they've done a lot of studies about um, stars and how people evaluate um, the quality of something. And based on both Amazon and Google, using uh, yellow stars, that it, it actually is hard for people to conceptually to use a different color star. It is almost ingrained in us that, that it's the yellow five stars. We want to consistently ask for those reviews. We want to be mindful, especially as the business is starting out, that those reviews are so important and not necessarily the easiest to come by. It really depends on your business model. If you are a hairdressing salon and you have five hairstylists and they each see three clients a day, and you're asking each of those people for a review, keeping in mind not everyone is gonna leave a review, but this is an opportunity for many reviews. Even if only a third of the people that you ask for a review actually leave one, that's still every day a lot of requests. Other businesses, especially if you have longer term uh, business relationships, or smaller portfolios, like if you are working with one or two clients for 30 days, that's a very different um, opportunity to request reviews than the hairstylist. So we want to make sure that um, we're taking every opportunity to ask for them. Um, and, and building in sometimes automated steps for that to happen. Sometimes asking for the review, it makes some people feel uncomfortable. Um, and so, you know, building some of these pieces of automation and often allow for that, that process just to happen very seamlessly. We're gonna respond to all reviews, positive or negative. Um, a good response to a negative review can often take a bad situation and make the best of it. Uh, sometimes a bad review is warranted. Sometimes you'll get a bad review and you'll think, I don't even think I've ever worked for this person. I don't know them. Their name doesn't look familiar to me. Um, and, and so using, you know, a professional but um, open communication to say, hey, you know, I don't, I don't think we've worked together. You know, can you please contact the R office and we can dig into this issue further? Something along, you know, uh, something along those lines. You definitely don't want to leave the negative reviews there with no response. Some people, it, it, it's like, oh no, it's, it's negative. There is an element of filtering by Google. And so, um, Sometimes reviews take a longer time to post. Sometimes reviews never post. Um, sometimes, you know, Google considers a review spammy or could be potentially fake. Um, and then they filter those. So there is, it's, it's not a perfect system. They're obviously, the, their objective is to, to keep um, what they would consider an authentic review. Um, very recently, um, some news came out about uh, gating reviews. And so it's, it's the excuse me, unethical practice of 
um, only posting usually to the website, the website, positive reviews, um, hiding all the negative ones. And so there are some big brands that have been fined some big penalties for these kinds of things. In today's world, people want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. They want the truth. And so um, you want to keep transparency in that process, respond to the reviews, um, value those reviews. Oftentimes in your business, um, you know, if, if you've had a disgruntled customer um, and, and you're kind of think, you know, you're almost focusing on the principle of the situation, the negative review can be damaging for years to come, especially if you don't have a lot of reviews. If, if we go back to that hairstylist option, if you're getting tons of good reviews, the occasional not great review, you know, is, is not ideal, but likely to happen. But if you only have a few reviews, you really want to make sure that they they are, are positive. And so be mindful of that as you're, um, you know, conducting business when things have not gone the most amazing way. Number seven, photos. Really surprising statistic. Recent study showed that businesses with more than 100 photos get 520% more calls. 520%, this is huge. Over a thousand percent more website clicks for some photos. Again, do you have to do it? No. Is it a missed opportunity if you choose not to? Yes. These are the kinds of things that it's like, let's get, let's go all in. Let's get those photos out. Here's where Google has made things a little bit confusing, and I just want to dive into it for one moment. On your Google My Business profile, at the very top above your business name, you have the photo section. And at the very bottom, you have a posts section. The posts are very similar to like a social media feed. Graphic copy. The photos, hopefully geotagged, are at the top. Your clients can add photos as well. Maybe a before and after picture, uh, these types of things. Those all go to the top. But from in the Google My Business admin screen, in the menu, the posts is the, at the top of the list and the photos is at the bottom of the list. So often, People are trying to add photos and they end up adding them as posts because they're opposites. So making sure by adding posts, so often um, recommend repurposing certain social media content and posting to the Google My Business profile as posts. So you know, if you think about your social media content, you have some that is providing information, um, offers, this type of thing, great content to post to social media. Um, as well, great content to post to your Google My Business profile. This content is not as relevant um, when it, the pure um, objective is engagement. So if you have a post that, you know, offers a controversial opinion and asks someone their opinion, um, that is not as relevant as a Google My Business post. So we usually leave those ones out. The other piece is the um, Google My Business profile posts are a different um, configuration ratio, they're um, the, like presentation size versus square. So if you are directly repurposing content off of say Instagram or Facebook, you have to be mindful that it's going to crop and so that is kind of a cautionary note. Photos that you're uploading are gonna be at the top. These are photos for things of your, your products, your team, your location, all these types of things. 
two different things. And so um, this statistic referencing the photos is the images at the top above the name. Number eight, the posts. So we chatted briefly about it during number seven, repurposing the appropriate social media posts. That image size is 750 by 560 pixels. So in terms of saving time and optimizing that process, our agency workflow is to take the content that we have prepared for say, Facebook. So we have um, a Canva document that will say, you know, business name, March content. And so they will be all Facebook post size images. And once those graphics are approved by the client, so we prepare all the graphics. So if you were preparing all your own, you would create all of your graphics. And then once they're finished, you would duplicate that file. So you would have your original file that is the squared for Facebook or Instagram. And then you're going to resize the new copy to the 750 by 560. And you're going to remove any of the posts that you want to omit. So any of those like purely engagement uh, style posts that you're going to remove to delete those. And then you're going to have a look at the graphics and make sure that you don't need to reconfigure anything based on the fact that it's gone from square to a more horizontal layout. Um, if you're doing that in Canva, super quick. So, so taking you know content that you've already created and repurposing it creating those graphics in the new size configuration, you can do 20 posts in five minutes. So we're not talking a significant time investment. When you look at the value for doing so, it's, it's definitely worthwhile. The other piece is um, when you're writing your captions. Um, so we use um, the Aurora social media scheduling tool for scheduling our Google My Business posts. And so we write a specific caption for the Google My Business um, posts. And so we do not include hashtags and we always include a call to action link. All right. Optimization number nine, Q and A. The most underutilized Google My Business profile feature around. Nine of the 10 profiles that I look at have no Q&A. If you want to think about what are the frequently asked questions for your business, maybe you have a frequently asked question section of your website, maybe um, if it's not you who answers the phone, maybe the person who does answer the phone has like, oh yeah, all the time people ask us ABC. These are the things you wanna add into the Q&A. You can create the questions and you can write the answers. Clients can also, or prospective clients can also write questions, but, but Google encourages you to write your own questions as well. This is another opportunity to add more keywords, add more information about your business. Hey, what is your refund policy? If that's relevant to your business. Um, you know, hey, do you offer Saturday services? Do you offer a specific style of photos? You know, I was, I was speaking to a client recently and, and all the time she gets asked because she has a photo studio, do you do passport photos? So one of the questions that she can add then is, do you offer passport photos? No, we do not offer passport photos. Give the information to Google, add the information. If there are spots where you can add information about your business into this prime real estate on the Google page, you want to add it in. Okay. If you're looking
looking for ways to save time. If you see the value in this Google My Business optimization, and to be honest, you, you have to see the value in the Google My Business optimization because if you are a business that is existing, growing, and, and selling in a local space, it, this has become more important than your website because it's the gatekeeper of your website. And so if your information is not getting the right person who is Googling to that Google My Business profile, if you want to automate your requests, messages, um, any of these pieces, uh, we recommend Eleanor. So for requests, Google My Business messages is a type of thing, it's $47 a month. Just to be um, upfront and honest with the cost, this is not a sales pitch. I just want to offer the costs of some of these options because there's nothing worse than realizing I have all of these opportunities. I could add all these photos. I can do these reviews. And then looking at your uh, you know, workload and thinking, I, I, can't, I know I need to. I know this offers benefit to my business, but I just I can't take this on right now. And we also offer a done for you profile optimization service. It's $327. This is things like geotagging photos, writing keyword descriptions, adding in those questions and answers. So if, if you look at your list from today and say, hey, I really need to do this for my business, but I have a full plate, we do offer the done for you service. Join us. We have a service-based business society Facebook community. It is full of all sorts of tips, tricks, time savers, um, opportunities for some additional SEO strategies, some feature upgrades, all these types of things. We talk about them in the free community, the service-based business society. If you want to join, you can either type the name into the Facebook search bar or you can grab the QR code. Thank you very much for coming today and, and really understanding how important Google has become in the online space. Remember, we don't Yahoo when we were looking for things. We Google. It is important, you know, if, if, the, if the most important thing to take from today is that Google wants to connect you with your ideal client. At the end of the day, Google has become the Google because it is, it is providing that service. It is connecting people. It is providing the people the information that they need. So you need to do your part as the business owner to give the information to Google. Give it everything that you can. Fill out the boxes. Add in the attributes. Choose the category. Do all of these pieces. And in turn, your clients will have a much easier time finding you. They will connect with you. Your website will get more views. Your phone will ring more often. Thank you so much and good luck with your profile optimization.